Oh, it's time. Time to get radical. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome to Radical Comment of the Week for August 30th through September the 5th, 2021. These are the very best comments from that time period. This one's actually going to be very rushed. Literally, I don't have much time for this one, so there's going to be very short replies to the medalist today. My apologies. The honorable mentions come to us from GTV Japan, Hooded Farmer, and Sinister Moon. The bronze medal comes to us from Lassie, Kinowin81. Completing actual collections doesn't work as a goal when there's more people wanting to do it than there's copies out there. That was the driving, driving the price for rare shitty games before and to some extent will drive after. People want to have them as a checkbox. What it actually means is that if you're starting now and want to go for a complete NA, NES set for example, it's just a matter of money due to those rare titles. Going complete for sake of going complete is pretty stupid in 2021 though. It's not even a feat to do it, it's just a matter of money. And even if you find them in the wild for a couple of bucks, it's still money you could have in your pocket. You're still out of having the 180 bucks if you find a 180 buck game for a tenner and decide to keep it. Anyhow, for some smaller print in a NES games to come down in value, people would need to stop going for complete sets. Less people would need to be interested in them, etc., which will take us time. Luckily, you don't need to own the games to play them as most of the cards end up sitting on some dude's shelf in the background while they make videos about what games they bought this month. Yes, focus on that. That you're watching a YouTube upload and there's games sitting on a guy's shelf behind him that he collected that he's probably never going to play. He's never going to play them. Now, you can't get that game because there's a limited there's a limited amount of those games and you have a hobby where there's so many people for some reason wanting to have complete collections complete collections I don't understand wanting to have a complete collection other than just checking off some invisible checkbox like Barbie for instance there are full grown men right now that are scouring searching for a boxed complete in box Ness Barbie that's just kind of sad. And, you know, what's the value of it now? Because people want their complete collections? I don't have the time to just check the value right now. But if it's more, anything more than a quarter, then that's way too much. The silver medal comes to us from Stargazing. I just discovered Camelot recently and knew something was off with the first video of him crying about ha not having friends and then claiming that his viewers were his real friends. People he has never met before are apparently his real friends worth crying over. That is one manipulation point. There is nothing wrong with having a friendly relationship with your fans, but letting on to being that close with them is unhealthy and is obviously done for personal gain, especially when you cry for something so sorry to say insignificant. They watch you on YouTube, dude. Relax. Also, I saw a comment of someone saying something along the lines of, what's wrong with paying a character, uh, playing, well, paying and playing the character, uh, playing a character for entertainment. Other YouTubers do it. Well, when you use said character to manipulate people, that is when it becomes a problem. Let's look at Dr. Disrespect. He is a character and is entertaining. He makes a living because of it. All genuine. He is entertaining by being funny, over the top, cocky, and fun to mess with and talk to. He doesn't pull on heartstrings and manipulate the world outside of his character for personal gain. Now it has been exposed that Camelot has taken a bunch of money, donated originally for his car, and just pocketed it. Yeah, you're one point of manipulation. That's a very strong, powerful point. I just, I, I don't have any friends, and I feel like a lot of you are my friends. Right there, right there. That's just one of his many manipulation points he uses. And you talk about these close connections and it's okay having a relationship with your fans. Uh, yeah, it's okay if you're not in a situation to where you're crying on YouTube, literally trying to cry on YouTube because you don't have any fucking friends. Get the fuck over it, you know? I mean, that's one point of manipulation. If I had the time stargazing, I would go into several different points 
of manipulation. But that is one very strong manipulation point. And that's why we call him a sympathy variety e-beggar on YouTube. The gold medal comes to us from Johnny Rivera. I played through the Halo trilogy last year, Halo 1, 2, and 3, on Xbox 360, and I had a fantastic time. Halo was a franchise I always liked, but never had a chance to play through the actual campaigns until now. When I was a kid, my older brothers always played tons of games on Xbox and the other consoles. We had like three major consoles at the time, and split-screen Halo 2 was my favorite thing ever. We always had fun shooting the rocket launchers at the floor to see who would go up the highest, laugh out loud. It sucks that Bungie doesn't work on Halo anymore. I remember all the cool stuff Halo did back then, like the guest character in Dead or Alive 4, and then the Hayabusha armor in Halo 3 based on the Ninja Gaiden series. I found out it was in Master Chief Collection and immediately went into Halo 3 multiplayer laugh out loud. As for games that bring back bad memories, last year in April, my dad passed, and during that time I was playing the new Animal Crossing on Switch, so for about all of April after his passing, I felt that I ended up using that game as a coping mechanism to deal with the trauma. I still have nearly 200 hours in that game, but it's hard to go back to it because all it does is bring back that period of time. Lately, my mom had been obsessed with playing Animal Crossing, and I feel it's made me want to play the game on occasion, because I remember the joy I had playing the series. I grew up with the Animal Crossing uh, series and played every main entry since the original on GameCube, so I was excited for this one, but sometimes life happens and something can take away your enjoyment. Didn't want to be a downer for this comment, and I know it's a really long one, but yes, yeah, sometimes games can bring us both good and bad memories. Stay radical. I'm thinking right now of games that I've played with people. My apologies for the notification. I'm thinking about games I've played with people that brought me a lot of joy, intense joy. Tekken, for instance, you know? One of the funnest times I had was just playing, you know, drunk Tekken with people. And I wound up actually punching a hole through my wall just out of frustration because one person kept using the same maneuver over and over again. Literally, I punch a hole in the wall. Right right now, I still, I fix the hole, but I laugh about it. And I put a poster over the hole. That's a, that's a great memory. But then I have the bad memories, remembering games that I played kind of to cope. I remember uh, my grandfather passing on, and I found out about it, and I just played a game. It wasn't even a play, play, I didn't even play a game specifically that had anything to do with it, because me and my grandfather, we never played games together, but I remember just one night playing a Need for Speed game, and I kept going over race after race after race, and I wasn't even like paying attention to it. Like I was literally holding the controller, kind of just coping with the news that my grandfather passed on. Uh, most recently, my best friend passed on in 2019, and me and him used to play Dying Light together. And, you know, it's hard for me to go back and to play something like that game. And of course, I'm, you know, going to play Dying Light too, because I asked myself, is it really worth it? Is it really worth holding on to the pain of those memories or just trying to focus on the joy more than the pain and to move past it. It's a choice that we make. It's a choice we make when we look back and we focus on the bad moments and the bad memories. Whether I think the best thing is to focus on the joy rather than the pain. And your situation, look at it this way, you're lucky enough to still have your mother and she wants to play Animal Crossing with you there'll be a time in the future where you'll look back and you will you will regret these little moments right now that you could be having with your mother is is the wisdom I'll pass on to you because there's moments right now that I look back on people that have passed on in my life and I wish I would have actually had more time to just play games with them or watch movies or listen to some music you know, these are memories. And this is pretty much all we can control in life is the moments we make right now. 